Ah, they say uh, that you get what you ask for. And I asked for a bit of excitement. I was feeling so relaxed. I was thinking, I can't do this tea for a druid thing. I'm just so laid back. I'm just totally at peace. And hey, presto, the internet went down just, just at, dead on eight o'clock. And so I've been rushing around. Hi, Machelin. Uh, hi, Ellie. Um, great to see you piling in. Donna, hello. Um, I was just saying how um, you sometimes get exactly what you asked for. And I've just come back from holiday and I've been feeling so relaxed. I was thinking, this isn't a good mood to be in for a tea with a druid. You need a little bit of uh, adrenaline in the system in order to want to communicate at all. Otherwise, you're just in a kind of om state with nothing to say. And then uh, suddenly I couldn't connect. So I've been running around. I've run upstairs and downstairs and switched things on and switched things off. And it's lovely to see you all here. Beth from Abruzzo, Erica from Kentucky. Great. Hi. Hi. Lovely to see you. And a big thank you to Steve for doing Tea with the Druid uh, last week, which enabled me to uh, remain on holiday without trying to find a good internet connection. And uh, so thank you for that, Steve. And it's lovely to, to be with you uh, in this moment. And, you know, I came across a, a, an article um, on the BBC website called F-O-M-O-M-G, a new acronym. It means the fear of missing out on my goals. There's a whole page of, of, of people talking about it. Oh, I want to show you my cup. Isn't this lovely? This was given to me by Mariana, who used to work in the OBOD office. Uh, I think she made it, actually. It's very beautiful. Um, and it's got real tea in it. So, okay, so um, I've been working for the last few months on an online course designed to work with magic to help us achieve our goals. Because I believe that um, psychology, with all its work around goal setting and how we can orient ourselves and so on, is hugely helpful. Add into the mix a spiritual magical approach and you've got something wonderful that's essentially what the little book lessons in magic is based on that you get for free if you sign up on my website and so on and little paperback too and uh but it's very condensed it's like i i condensed all this material into a little slim volume and i'm aware that it really needed to be expanded and i thought it would be fun to do a uh, a course in it online, perfect medium for it. So I've made a bunch of films, 22 brave souls from around the world who uh, heard about it on this uh, tea session, uh, have spent the last couple of months working through the lessons. And uh, it's been great to get their feedback and huge thanks to them. And uh, I've learned a great deal and I've adjusted the course accordingly. So it's about to be launched just after Samhain, the beginning of the new cycle, November the 2nd, that's when it's gonna go out. Uh, but I'm going to record some more films to go with it, um, to cover various points that need teasing out. And one point that I thought I would tease out today, and then we can um, relax and uh, have a meditation, is this very subject that's on the BBC web article, F-O-M-O-M-G, the fear of missing out on my goals. Um, it's important to have goals. In, in a sense, we have goals all the time. My goal is to, to do this tea session. Your goal might be to sit back and relax or to make a cup of tea or whatever it is. We're, we're setting little goals for ourselves all the time. And the idea of consciously setting goals is to kind of take charge of our lives and to say, okay, I have this wonderful gift of being alive. What shall I set out to do? What would I like to do? What do I think will be of help in the world? What will bring me a sense of fulfillment? And that's really important. Uh, but of course, what can sometimes happen is that we fail. We don't actually uh, get what we want. We don't achieve our goals. And now the kind of reply you get to that is, is about how failure is a great educator how you know you'll look back uh, in the future and realize that actually not achieving that goal was helpful and so on and it's of course massively true that failure teaches us uh, 
things that success doesn't teach us. And, and it's really important. However, in uh, the moment when and the time you're experiencing not having achieved your goal, to be told, oh, it's a good lesson, you'll learn, you'll learn from this, is rather like being told that suffering is good for you when, you know, when a truck is on your leg or something like that. It, it may well be true that suffering helps to mature us and develop the soul. But it's often not helpful to say it. Um, and what do we do about this? Well, this is where I think magic comes in. Magic works with uniting the opposites, with becoming aware of the opposites and exploring re the relationship between the opposites. Think of yin and yang and the power in that understanding. Think of chalice and blade, the focus of the will, the chalice of love and openness. And think of the primal experience of magic uh, that our ancestors felt and we still feel today. When we counterpose dark with light, when we sit under a black night sky and then one by one, the points of stars come out. I was in, um, on holiday uh, you know, a few days ago out in Ibiza in a little finca, a little farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere, looking up at the night sky. And, and there were the, the, there was very little light pollution, so I could see really clearly. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And that, I believe, is the primal human experience of magic. Seeing the stars appear in the night sky, seeing a baby being born out of the womb, out of the darkness of the womb, seeing uh, plants growing out of the darkness of the soil into the sunlight. So this, and of course, at a, at a level of consciousness, it's the relationship between the conscious mind and the unconscious. If we're conscious all the time, imagine that we achieve our goal of being mindful and super clear and super aware. We'd go nuts if we didn't also have times when we dived into unconsciousness, where we went to sleep. When they keep, it's one way to torture people is keep them awake all the time, make them conscious all the time, play them music, loud music every time they go to sleep. So we need both. And this is the secret, I think, that we need to apply when it comes to working towards our goals. Is that we need to constantly remind ourselves that we as human beings are both being and becoming. By that I mean we are human beings who simply through being in the world, being conscious beings, are fulfilling our destiny. We are beings. And at the level of soul, the level beyond linear time, we are simply immersed in being, in the greater being of, of deity, with our own individual consciousness as one being within that. But at the same time, in the world of linear time, we are becoming. We're traveling through time and we're able to make changes in our lives. We experience different things. We are becoming. Seeing my dear old mum today in her uh, home uh, at the age of 96, she was still saying to me, you know, I'm making some progress, I think. You know, which is, it, every time she says that, it touches me, you know, because the rational mind thinks, how can you progress from here? You know, this is, you're in this sort of strange kind of waiting room at the end of your life in an, in an old people's home. It's, it's, it's like you're not going anywhere. Um, but that's the wrong way to look at it. In her mind and in her heart, she can connect with the experience of becoming, of becoming in some way, of traveling through time in a way that thankfully for her feels good. And so whenever we're working with our becoming, our movement through linear time, then we have a sense of goals. We're working towards goal. I would like to become a therapist. I would like to become 
a druid. I would like to become a psychologist. I'd like to become a painter. I would like to uh, live in New Zealand. I would like to live in Ibiza, whatever it is. You're, you're setting yourself goals. And some of those goals you achieve, some of the, them you don't. When you don't achieve them, you might learn something, you might grow from them, your life might take a different direction, it might stay the same. But that's only one part of the story. And if you focus just on that story, I would submit that you're gonna be continually disappointed because there's a thing in psychology which is called impact bias. Impact bias shows that people continuously overestimate the positive and the negative effect of what they are going to achieve. Uh, if they're worried about some bad event, they will tend to overestimate the gravity and the, the amount of impact that will have on them. If they're looking forward to something exciting and positive, they will tend to overestimate the impact, the positive impact that will have, winning the lottery, whatever it is, all sorts of fascinating studies that go into great detail of that. So um, I got distracted by reading all your lovely comments. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for saying those things. Um, Christine Golding's asking for how much the course. I, I'm not sure yet. We'll, we'll, I'll let you know when it, when it comes out on, on November the 2nd. Um, um, Jason's goal is to open this bottle of beer, but he can't find the bottle opener. So he may fail. Jason may be faced with failure this evening, uh, but I'm sure he'll get over it. Um, I'm, I've completely lost the thread now. What was I talking about? I was talking about impact bias, how we overestimate. Yes, and how if we focus only on our goals, um, we're going to be disappointed in the end. Because not only is there impact bias, which means, you know, when you achieve it, it's not actually as powerful an experience as you imagined it would be. But also you have what's called hedonic habituation. Sorry for all this terminology. But um, you have this experience of getting used to good things, which explains why wealthy people just need more cash all the time. Because, you know, when you've got a yacht and, uh, you know, all the diamonds and jewels and all the rest of it, you get habituated to it. And so you need more. It's like a drug. You need more and more and more. And that's why the bankers need bigger and bigger bonuses, poor chaps, because they've become hedonically habituated, like a drug taker. So the solution is to balance our desire to achieve our goals with completely letting go of our goals, our, our interest in achieving goals, and instead basking in the moment in the moment switching from becoming to being and that's what we're going to do now we're going to switch from a sense of progressing through a series of ideas growing our thoughts and developing our minds and understanding to we're going to let go of that completely and just slip into a sense of uh, being. How's that? So um, let's just become aware now of being together. This extraordinary business that you know each of us is sitting in front of our computer or our laptop or our mobile phone, maybe with our family or um, uh, with a friend or partner, but more often than not, I suspect on our own in uh, Brazil, St. Petersburg, uh, Reykjavik in Iceland, down the road in Brighton, all over the world in New Zealand. But there's a part of us that feels connected because we're meeting in this virtual space, in the space of the imagination that I suggest is even more than that. And I think we know that too. It's a magical space. It's an inner grove, an inner sanctuary, which in the Druid tradition we see as a clearing in the forest. So imagine now that you're seated in this clearing and you've got the earth beneath you and it feels so good to have that earth beneath you. You can feel and sense all the life in it. 
And you notice how it provides a sense of stability. You know that however wobbly you might feel, however tired you might feel, you can just allow yourself to sit on this earth. You can even lie down on the earth if you want to. Sit on the earth or lie on the earth and just feel supported by it. You're going to be held by it, however tired you feel. Held by the earth and also energized and strengthened by it too. All that life in the earth that can help to grow trees and vegetables and bring life into the world, all that energy is flowing into you too. And it's flowing into the roots of the trees around you as well. You sense the trees now in their majesty, their power, their strength. These wonderful trees, their roots anchored in the soil, their trunks stretching up. And they might feel like older brothers and sisters to you. Sometimes it seems to me that they're wiser than us. They cause less harm. They're powerful, they're beautiful, they're peaceful. And they give us oxygen. They bring us life. And we breathe in that oxygen. We breathe in that life. Thankful and grateful to these mighty beings who exist on this earth for us and for all creatures. And we breathe in the energy of the trees. And we become aware of the sky now. And it's dusk turning to night. No moon in the sky at the moment. Just a wonderful dark moon, so no moon, and just a darkening sky getting darker and darker. Until one by one, the stars start to come out. And as you breathe in and you breathe out, completely effortlessly. You can breathe in consciously if you like and hold your breath for a while and then breathe out. Or you can just allow your breath to just work by itself. Gently moving your lungs, gently feeling your chest moving up and down, breathing in the energy of the sky, the energy of the stars. And you close your inner eyes in the sacred grove. And it's as if you can sense the stars in your aura. You can sense it in some other way. So there's this magic twinkle of starlight. And that starlight is nourishing you, is bringing you gifts that you can't even understand or describe, and you don't need to. You can just completely let go. Sensing the starlight in the night sky, feeling at one with the stars, with the night sky, with the trees around you, the hush of the forest at night, the stability of the earth beneath you. And as you just breathe in and you breathe out, you know that in this moment there's nothing you need, nowhere you need to go, nothing you need to do. All you need to do is just be. Being in this moment of peace and of starlight. And then very gradually you notice that 
The sun is starting to rise, it's dawn. And there's just a faint pinky orange glow in the sky. And then as the sun rises in the sky, you just feel the sunlight flowing down into your body, starting with your face, your forehead and brow, just moving down. So your whole face is in the gentle sunlight of dawn, of a new morning, reaches your shoulders and your chest now, and you feel your heart warmed by the sun. And you feel your solar plexus now, your tummy warmed by the sun. And then right the way down, your hips and your legs and thighs. And you bring your hands to your chest and you feel the palms of your hands, feeling the warmth in your heart, the glow of the sun. And then you gradually let go of this image, retaining the feelings of warmth and well-being, of a sense of clarity and freshness. And you gradually open your eyes, knowing that you can return to this place at any time. And uh, you become aware of being fully present in front of your computer or your uh, laptop or your phone. Perhaps with the warm glow of the sun still inside you. And uh, feeling fully present here and now. And so thank you so much for uh, being here. Thank you for being you. And um, I hope this has been of some help. I'm going to read your comments uh, after I've, 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 I've tanked up on some more tea in, in this lovely mug that I'm using. And just to recap in a nutshell, Tassi says a nice thing. I am in this process. Uh, I don't know what that process is, but I hope I hope it's the process that we're going through now of of being both both here now and also allowing ourselves to have goals, having having both. And so have have a great week, and um, and uh, I'll I'll read your comments in a minute, and uh, have a lovely week. I hope it's really wonderful for you, and uh, I'll see you again next Monday at the same time. Okay, lots of love. Bye.